good morning dear students welcome back to our biology class and we were looking for the lesson life processes okay students whenever you were in the school that time most of the part of the photosynthesis i have tried to cover okay and you have also given a better response for it whatever i said you to draw in your notebook you have completed that all okay later on during this uh, session online session or this video lectures i have tried to complete the factors affecting photosynthesis okay and in last video i let you know about the nutrition into the amoeba or that process is called as a phagocytosis i hope you all have watched those videos because it is going to be really very important for you frequently you have to watch once you don't understand then watch it again you will get to know once you will watch and you will not understand and you will leave it it will not the matter right or it will not make any sense students so what you do frequently you watch two three times you watch make your own notes and then it will be easier for you okay so today we are going to talk about the nutrition into the human beings nutrition into the human beings students we are knowing we are following the mode of nutrition that is heterotrophic mode of nutrition means we are unable to prepare our own food we have to depend on someone else to for the food okay because we are unable to prepare our own food we are taking food from someone else okay especially from the plants and some animals because we are omnivores means plants and animals is our food right so we have gone for it in the previous session only i have let you know about the heterotrophic mode of nutrition then i said you specifically if you will talk about it then we are following the mode of nutrition that is holozoic mode of nutrition okay what is mean by holozoic mode of nutrition means all kind of nutrients we are trying to take in our body right and the whole food we are trying to take it may be into the form of solid or it may be into the form of liquid but the whole food we are able to take because we have organs also because we have, we are uh, following the um, mode of locomotion also we have seen into the life processes means what are the processes exactly to have a life or to survive in that moment was also there so locomotion is also there because we have specific organs and we can move to grab the food from one place to another place and so that with the help of our hand we can grab the food as it is whole food whole food means what all kind of nutrients are present in it as well as that food may be into the solid form or may be into the liquid form that is called as a holozoic mode of nutrition which is followed by very interesting thing is that amoeba is also following the holozoic mode of nutrition that is called as the phagocytosis and we are also following a holozoic mode of nutrition okay students so here today i am going to talk about our digestive system students it is going to be interesting point listen to it it is we are talking about your digestive system or our digestive system so please pay attention towards it okay see here students human digestive system okay human digestive system is mainly bifurcated into two two things what are those things so those things are alimentary canal two things mainly alimentary canal डायजेस्टिव ट्रैक और इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज अ गट सिस्टम 
I hope you understand the concept of alimentary canal. What is mean by alimentary canal, students? In the human digestive system, whatever the organs are coming, which are helping to digest the food, or which are the food is following the path. That path is called as a digestive tract, alimentary canal. Or gut system. I hope you understand this concept. Alimentary canal means what? Okay. And this alimentary canal starts from the mouth, right? Starts from the mouth and ends to the anus. Okay. Every organ of this alimentary canal we are going to see in detail. Okay. Step by step, everything we will see. Okay. And what is the next part of this digestive system? The next part of this digestive system is digestive glands. See, here, students, only alimentary canal is not needed to digest our food. There are some glands. Those glands are secreting some specific enzymes, some digestive juices. Those digestive juices are mixing in the food, and then the process is carried out. Means. Chemical breaking down of our food is taking place throughout our alimentary canal with the help of the enzymes which are secreted by the digestive glands. So, separately we are going to study about alimentary canal and the digestive glands. Okay, but in today's lecture we are going to have mainly focus on the alimentary canal. Okay. What parts are included into the alimentary canal? We will see first. Okay, the first part of the alimentary canal is what? Mouth. Our mouth. The second part of the alimentary canal is buccal cavity. It is buccal cavity. The third part of our alimentary canal is esophagus. It is Esophagus. Okay. After esophagus, there is a stomach. There is a stomach. See, your students. Till now, if I would ask, ki where the digestion is taking place, some are giving answer into the stomach. Or everyone knows, stomach is only the digestive organ, and here only digestive uh, digestion, complete digestion is taking place. But it's not true, students. Exactly from where the digestion process starts, where does it end, what happens, and what is the role of the part which are involved into the alimentary canal, we will see. But it's not true, it's myth that alimentary canal's part, that is stomach, that is only the part of the digestive system. It's not true. Rather, in the stomach, the less digestion means uh, it's the end of the digestion process. The site of the complete digestion is the small intestine. Okay, students. So after stomach, there is a small intestine. After that, intestine will be there, and this intestine, intestine, sorry, intestine is bifurcated into two. That is what small intestine. Next session. Here we will talk about only the parts.
parts of the aluminium atom. See, students. So now I shall rub this. It's not necessary that I am not going to explain now. So I shall rub it. Okay. So this is what students. This is mouth. Okay. This is mouth. After mouth or into the mouth, whatever the cavity-like structure is present, that is called as a buccal cavity. That is called what? Buccal cavity. Okay. Here you can see. Here you can see this pipe-like structure is present. That is called commonly called as a food pipe or esophagus. You can pronounce according to your way, but write the correct spelling. It may be said as esophagus or esophagus. You, whatever you want to pronounce it, you may pronounce, but write the correct spelling into your exam. Okay. After it, you can say this J-shaped organ, right? J-shaped muscular pouch that is called as what? Stomach. That is called what? Stomach. Beside it, here you can see one gra gland. Okay, as we are not studying in gland, but they do as a part of this digestive system, I have to show you. So, this is what a liver. Students, you know, one interesting fact about liver, hundreds of functions are followed by the liver. How this or in which system exactly liver is working, that we will go, when we will go in detail in every lesson, I will let you know. Okay? What, what is the role of the liver in the digestive system? What is the role of the liver in the excretory system? I shall have a talk on it at that particular time. So this is liver. Beside the liver, you can see there is one gland which is actually because students, this liver is a uh, inside the liver. This is, liver is the bilobed structure I can say. Liver is what? The bilobed structure and into one lobe there is a gallbladder. What is that structure? Gall bladder, which stores biopigment. That I shall say you later. And here you can see the structure is called as a pancreas. The structure is called as a pancreas, which is the second most largest gland into the body. Then what is the first most largest gland into the body? The first largest gland into our body is liver. Okay. And the second most largest gland into our body is what? Pancreas. Okay. After it, you can see this coil like structure that is called as a large intestine. What it is called? Large intestine. Okay. And inside it, coil like structure is present that is called as a small intestine. Small intestine. And Then the whole alimentary canal which starts from the 
mouth and aids to the anus see students in exam in exam the question may come that what are the parts of the alimentary canal or the question is uh, can come like that this also ki where does exactly the digestion process is starts so students you can write the parts of the alimentary canal no problem no doubt guaranteed i i can give a guarantee that you can write the parts of the alimentary canal but if the question would come where the digestion process is start into the human digestive system then you should write that mouth itself the digestion process starts okay so and the length of this whole alimentary canal which starts from mouth and ends up to anus is 9 meter long okay so second point will be human beings uh alimentary canal alimentary canal uh length you uh, in human beings the length in human beings sorry students forward the food is pushing forward 
ड्यू टू वन स्पेसिफिक मूवमेंट राइट स्टूडेंट्स ड्यू टू सम स्पेसिफिक मूवमेंट एंड दैट मूवमेंट इज कॉल्ड एज अ पेरिस्टिलैटिक मूवमेंट ओके पेरिस्टिलासिस द प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड एज अ पेरिस्टिलासिस here what happens into the peristalsis when we engulf the food see don't compare our esophagus like just a pipe it's a narrow pipe its width is very small its lumen is very small so whenever we try to engulf the food just in the into the pipe so just imagine you have one pipe of just this uh, of 2 to 2 to 3 meter we can see and if you are pouring something from the pipe to the bottom it can go easily directly due to the gravitational pull it will go easily down but here in our mouth the food directly do not drop down into the stomach the food is going into the regular manner right because this as i said you this is the muscular wall the food goes down into the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the muscle when the food is here the upper part will be relax the lower part will become narrower means it will be contract then later on the food will go down that time also the the further part will be relax means which will be little larger then the lower part will be smaller in this manner with a continuous or rhythmic contraction and relaxation would takes place and then the food would go into the small intestine so this rhythmic contraction and relaxation of this muscular wall is called as a peristalsis and it helps into the whole digestive system to push the food into the forward direction i hope you understand this concept that is called as a peristalsis the food pushes forward with the help of with the help of rhythmic rhythmic contraction contraction and relaxation of muscular wall of esophagus is called as is called as peristalsis is called as what peristalsis peristalsis or it is also called as a peristaltic movement okay students now food has dropped down right which has food has food has pushed forward in order to drop it down into the stomach now food will enter into the stomach as yes so in the shape of the stomach is like this you can see here it's a j shape organ it's a part of the esophagus the food will enter inside and here the churning process would take place okay here the churning process would take place then the food will move into the small intestine at the same time various digestive enzymes are mixing into the food okay and that churning process means the if you will see to eat to towards the stomach you will see the food the this the small intestine uh, sorry the stomach is continuously moving that moving process is called as a churning process right means digestive enzymes plus food is mixing together and that process is called as a churning process which is also an important process of the digestive system after it the food will enter into the small intestine okay the food will enter into the small intestine here the important nutrients which are needed for our body as well as whatever food we have eaten that food will convert into the simple nutrients and will get absorbed by the wall of the small intestine called as a villi over here called as a villi and villi the shape of the villi is like this which is present 
into the wall of the small intestine into the wall of the small intestine and that small intestine will have a finger like projection called as a villi plural it is called as a villi and singular it is called as a villus okay singular it is called as a villus so this structure is in the coiled form to increase the surface area why to increase the surface area because nutrients would be more and those nutrients has to get absorbed by capillary like structure and that capillary like structure is it is into the form of the finger like projection okay and that finger like projection is called as what villi or singular it is called as a villus here the food will get get digested will get absorbed okay the food will get absorbed and later on whatever the particles of the food which are undigested okay means the food or the small intestine is unable to digest the particles of the food okay here the complete absorption would be taken place right of the food material as well as of the water also okay so water and some nutrients will get absorbed from the food into the small intestine and what obvious as we will absorb water plus nutrients the later on whatever the undigested part of the food will be remaining that will be but obvious it into the form of the uh, solid form it will be into the solid form and that solid form will enter now into the large intestine now it will enter into the large intestine by the large intestine it will come over here here are the anal sphincter muscles will be there anal sphincter muscles will be there what it is called anal sphincter muscles which will regulate the entry means immediately uh, whenever we feel to uh, to get rid of the fecal matter at the same time the process does not takes place we can control on it okay in a uh, appropriate position then we will see it for this process to get rid of that time only the anal sphincter muscle is getting relaxed and then the fecal matter goes out so which allows means which allows the exit of the um, fecal matter okay so whenever we will feel we can we cannot get rid of this fecal matter right so we we can have a control and that control is done by the anal sphincter muscle after it temporarily the food that sorry undigested part now it's a it turned into the fecal matter undigested part is stored into this rectum temporarily and then at the time of the uh, getting rid of this uh, fecal matter through anus the food uh, undigested fecal matter goes out so this is all about means this is all about the human digestive system so yes students this is the idea of the human digestive system but but it's not yet finished i am going to talk in detail of every organ of the digestive system once we will complete every organ of the digestive system then we will go for the digestive glands i hope you understand the concept of the human digestive system thank you very much students